Recognize the member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm sure the minister knows exactly what I'm going to ask her about. Uh, November 2013, uh, the University Endowment Lands Community Advisory Council dropped a uh, proposal for an incorporation study on the minister's desk, metaphorically speaking. Uh, March 24, 2014, I was in this place and I asked uh, the minister for an update. She said she was gathering the facts about the current state of the UEL. She said they were, the ministry was doing fact-finding information gathering to look at service relationships. That she had people on the ground right now gathering the information so they could start to really move forward. Uh, Honourable uh, Chair, that was more than a year ago. And, uh, and as far as the uh, Community Advisory Council uh, knows, uh, no action. So can the Minister give an update on where we're at here? Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair, and thank you uh, to the member opposite uh, for the question. And uh, I, I appreciate um, the member uh, being engaged uh, in this particular file. Um, I, I agree that, um, you know, uh, one of the things we canvassed earlier, how do we modernize local governments, ensure that we're meeting the needs of the citizens of today? Uh, when you look at the uh, 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 the Port Point Grey uh, Peninsula arrangements have evolved over the past 107 years and we uh, significantly need to ensure that we are supporting uh, a new modern approach uh, to supporting these, these communities, uh, provide the services to their citizens. Um, we continue to focus our efforts, as you can well imagine, over the last 107 years. There's uh, a lot of service agreements in place, whether it's pipes in the ground, sewer, water systems, whether it's transportation, uh, whether it's working with uh, the university. Uh, we are looking at gathering that information. We continue to uh, work on that, and um, I remain committed to ensuring that uh, we find uh, a, a modern approach uh, to how we address uh, the governance uh, um, opportunities for the university endowment lands. Member. Mr. Chair, the Minister may be aware that we did a Freedom of Information request for uh, the work uh, done by consultants that the Minister had hired to go to the university endowment lands and collect this information. It seemed that they consulted with everybody uh, except for the people who live in the university endowment lands, the community advisory uh, committee. And if the Minister had asked uh, about what was happening at the UEL, she would have heard um, her staff would have heard, or consultants would have heard, that there's no official community plan, even though there's a massive new development happening at Block F, that there's no uh, development uh, uh, cost uh, um, charge policy, even though there's a massive new development going in place, that uh, there are neglected motions about uh, spending the capital reserve fund to actually uh, improve the capital, uh, the infrastructure amenities in the community, <laughs> streets, lights, uh, pipes, uh, the money's been saved. The money can't be spent, though, because there's no action. Uh, they're looking for any advocate to step forward and say, well, what's the allocation of things like firefighting costs between us and UBC? They're saying, who's going to step up and fight for the restoration of the $60,000 community grant that we used to receive? And, and uh, so I would say, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, that there is a very urgent crisis here in governance in this peninsula, and 107 years of Binding that 107-year-old pipe um, is not the core issue that the community has. The issue the community has is they make motions and there is no response. Can the minister assure the community that that will stop? That they, when they make a motion and say, will you deal with the infrastructure problem? Will you spend the money we have here on infrastructure? Will you issue the tenders? That that will happen. This is critically important. And uh, whether or not there's governance reform, I think the minister knows the community's feelings about that, that it needs to, there needs to be an investigation that it needs to happen. But when they make motions, can the minister assure the community that they'll actually be acted on? Minister. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker, and thank you to the member opposite. Um, I have examples of how, uh, in fact, that the uh, the uh, administration through the UEL has been very responsive to uh, the groups. Uh, for example, a motion came forward uh, that has been acted upon about the um, uh, having access to the Vancouver Public Library, and this was a request by the CAC, and that is now in place. As well, we've been very responsive uh, around infrastructure 
infrastructure and you know six hundred thousand dollars has been spent uh, in a capital plan and um, I'm pleased to say that three point five million dollars in infrastructure upgrades will be happening over the next uh, three years and in response as well uh, the uh, CAC was consulted on the budget as they are every year and they did endorse uh, the budget this year and they also um, sit on the working group and provide feedback on uh, block app so I would uh, there are a number of examples of how um, we are very responsive to the needs of the CAC. Member. Sure, uh, my final question, uh, the minister clearly uh, is having some trouble believing the message that I'm bringing to her from the community that there is a disconnect between the motions being passed by the CAC and action being taken by the administration, whether because of, uh, of understaffing or some other issue that needs to be addressed. I would like to invite the minister to come to the University Endowment Lands. I'd like to invite her again because I invited her to a community meeting. She didn't attend, didn't send any staff. I'd like to invite her to set aside some money in this budget to come down and meet with the people that she is the mayor for and uh, listen to them firsthand instead of listening to me because clearly uh, uh, there is, uh, there's, uh, I have a credibility issue with the, with the member and that's fine. But the community members will not have that issue so I encourage her to come down and uh, to hear from them firsthand. Will she uh, make a commitment to do that on the record? Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair. And to the member opposite, again, I would remind the member opposite that uh, there is a unique governance structure through uh, the UEL and the administration and the day-to-day -day operation is delegated to a UEL manager who exercises the authority and supports of, uh, of the um, small number of provincial public servants uh, that are in the area. The UEL manager keeps the ministry and myself informed uh, on uh, and up to date on what is happening with UEL and I assure you that I am provided with regular our briefings on the, the UEL. Um, we are laying the groundwork which I've identified to the member opposite. Uh, we want to understand the complexity of the relationships as well as the shared services and uh, we'll continue to work on that.